Some researchers wanted to figure out how people could potentially feed themselves in the apocalypse and what plants would be best to grow. Yes, as we march ever closer to doomsday, researchers are trying to help you out. We'll talk about it. Most people are pretty disconnected from where actual food comes from, literally. We live in densely populated cities, and we're reliant on a supply chain to make sure we are fed. There are somewhere between 8 and 14 billion people on Earth, if you heard that there was a massive miscalculation. It's probably not that off. But we still have a very vulnerable situation with how we feed ourselves. They consider two possibilities. One is that we have nuclear winter. The other is that we have a normal climate and our supply chain is simply decimated. So no fuel, no transport, and no communication. If mid-sized cities decided to utilize every piece of land, they could support about 20% of the population. So yes, a good number of people are doomed out of the gate. Sugar beets were actually high on the list for plants that could be grown in nuclear winter. In a normal climate, peas would probably be better. These were also chosen because peas actually fix nitrogen, so they have a reduced need for fertilizer and can help enrich the soil. Peas are also near and dear to my heart because I study dirt, and legumes are part of my research area. Now, assuming people have a little bit more space, potatoes are high on the list of food that you could grow during the apocalypse. Granted, I have kind of a visceral reaction to suggesting everyone should grow potatoes. Now, assuming we have nuclear winter, we're going to get cold where we normally wouldn't, so wheat could be high on the list of things that you could grow in a suburban area. Wheat also has an extraordinary shelf life. When considering any of these things, you do have to consider if you can grow them for a tiny sliver of the year, how long will it keep later? Although, same problem if everyone starts growing wheat, we'll probably end up with a dust bowl. But if we have nuclear winter, we've got other problems. Carrots. Carrots were also suggested as a crop that could be grown in suburban areas if we have nuclear winter. Now, what works for Everyone is going to be canola, because that could be used as a biofuel. Now, you may have noticed a flaw in this design. If we are going to say that we have industrial and suburban areas growing food, they're going to have to figure out water, so figure out making an aqueduct real fast. Likely, the only communities that might be able to pull this off are ones that have water supplies and the know-how of how to make irrigation work. Another concern is that we're assuming a utopia. So everybody gets along, somebody knows how to grow food, and they have the infrastructure to make that happen, which is the argument for the researchers. Now, being somebody with a weird interest in the apocalypse and someone who spent a lot of time outdoors, I do have considerations about the human-centric design. Trying to prep for the apocalypse by having an entire community be ready is awesome, but have you met people? I do hate to admit it, but it is probably better to plan as a society rather than as individuals. If we can have a culture where supply chain disruptions do not equal people fighting over toilet paper in Walmart, we may have gotten to a better place as a whole, but reducing our dependence on external factors is bad for the economy. Look, I think we're probably doomed, okay?